thousands. What we've invested into with the best part of twenty-eight thousand pounds, I'm going to get a thousand pounds for it. When you see the caravans being crane oh, off, I you see cry. the crane sites. Oh, I could cry. I really could. Also, is fox hunting still going on thirteen years after the ban? If the claim is that people are killing foxes illegally every time they go hunting, that's complete nonsense. They're in this dense scrub, you don't know what's going on. Anything can be happening now. And 60 years of diving and still making waves. He worked for, like, for 30 years. To have the opportunity to show him something that he hasn't seen is just amazing. This is Inside Out for the South of England. the holiday park dream that's turned into a nightmare. Owners of caravans at one site here in the south have told us they're losing tens of thousands of pounds after new developers told them they must leave. So what's been going on? Rookley Country Park Caravan Site. 120 caravans with lovely views. But all is far from well. It's total, and I've got to be very careful now. What's the word we're using? Border dash. Yeah, they've basically taken my money and laughed. We're all treated the same, don't we? Just, they just did what they wanted to do. We've been through hell, absolute hell. I've tried to hide it, but you know, I can't even look back. Now it looks like I've been, I've been nothing. In May last year, Rookley Country Park was sold by its owners, Island View, to a company called Aria Resorts. In September, Aria announced the phased redevelopment of the park. 35 owners were given three months to leave. 36 others have until the end of this year to get their caravans off site. This news came as a massive shock to many here at Rookley. Some people say they've lost tens of thousands of pounds. What have we got in here then? This one? It's carp, it's mainly big carp, is it? Yeah. Peter Albury paid £23,000 for his caravan and refurbished it to rent out to holidaymakers and fishermen. So as well as the initial cost, you spent a lot of money? Yeah, we spent a lot of money in the, obviously, you know, completely refurbed. It's, you know, settees, new carpet, new curtains, okay. new cooker. It was only put in at the start of the season. In September, Peter was suddenly told by Aria he had three months to get his caravan off the site. He says this goes against promises made to him by the previous owners. We was told at the point of sale, as long as you maintain the park rules, health and safety, gas checks, electricity checks, those caravans can stop on here as long as you like. A few weeks into his notice period, work began on redeveloping the park, turning his relaxing retreat into something very different. I'm obliged to notify them people who are coming on holiday. And as soon as I've notified them, they cancel. So I've had to refund them. I've also had to refund 13 people for next year's holidays. Peter lost £4,000 in cancelled bookings. That's what we paid the premium for, the view. What's more, That's he couldn't cool. move his caravan to a different park on the Isle of Wight because none will accept caravans over 10 years old. Peter's is 12. His only option was to sell at a massive loss. There's nothing we can do. The cost to get them back to the mainland is absolutely ridiculous. So what we've invested into with the best part of you know twenty-eight thousand pounds, I'm gonna get a thousand pounds for it. And that's it. The rest is gone. So how has Peter ended up in this position? Remember, he bought his caravan from the previous site owners. This is the sales license agreement from Island View Holidays. And the interesting area is this licence period. There's left, nothing there. No, left bank. And Peter's not alone. We've seen three dozen of these sales licences and found only one agreement where the licence period has a fixed duration. Some say not applicable. Others say annually. But most, like Peter's, have just been left blank. Everyone we spoke to here at Rookley told us they were led to believe their sales license was just an invoice and the length of their stay was up to them. I'm meeting Dan Ellicott from the National Association of Caravan Owners to find out if these sales licenses are the cause of the trouble. 
In the event that there's no license period specified in the, in the front sheet of the agreement, it would effectively means there's no security of tenure, which means that um, once uh, the pitch fee is paid, it only gives them security for that year. So despite what they say they've been told, if there's no date there, fees in effect aren't worth the paper they're written on, are they? Unfortunately not. Um, the, the, the fact of the matter is that without that additional information, without an end date, they revert to be an annual agreement, and in which case that gives them the right to only remain for the, for the coming year, and this is what we've seen in this instance. Part of the problem is that the, the legislative protection that's afforded to the consumer is the same as if you bought a jumper or a TV, unfortunately. It really isn't adequate for what they're buying. Aria Resource says that anyone with a duration written on their contracts has been allowed to stay. In what they call a transitional support package, they're offering caravan owners a payment of between £1,000 and £2,500. We happened to be filming at Rookley on the day these details were released. Does that come is it even close? No, we're in here. Oh, no, 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 no. The average loss is £20,000 for 75 people. It's 1.5 million, John. Who did that? The caravan. Mm. A real resort is a multi million pound organisation taking the mickey out of people that have worked hard all their all lives. Their lives. Yeah. These caravan owners later discovered Aria's offer was only for those who had to be gone by last Christmas, meaning many would get nothing. Aria Resorts says it's a responsible holiday operator and will look at all future claims. The company says it's investing millions of pounds on the Isle of Wight, creating up to 150 jobs. Carol Luffman is 80 this year. Twice a week, she takes the bus from Rookley to Newport, where she volunteers at various charity shops. Carol's caravan is her permanent home. Although that's against the rules, she says she was told she could live there when she bought it. Carol paid £17,000 for her first caravan. Then, in April last year, less than a month before the site was sold to Aria Resorts, she was offered an upgrade, which cost her a further £13,000. I sold my ISIS for the first caravan, and because this was more expensive, I sold my premium one. So that's it. This is it. This is what I've got. Oh, are you in Carol was told in September she had until the end of 2018 to move out. She was also told ground rent was due in full at the start of the year and it was going up. Very nice too. It's going to be £4,964. It's gone up 5% and I thought that is disgusting when they've got the nerve to put it up. They're digging up holes everywhere. This going on everywhere. Instead of paying increased ground rent to live on a building site for a year, Carol has decided to move off early. As she was given the option of another year, this means she won't qualify for any transitional support payment from Aria Resorts. When you see the caravans being framed oh, up and you see cry. the building type. Oh, I could cry. I really could. Sorry, I get up. But it is, it's heartbreaking. I mean, all the years I've worked, and at the end of the day, what have I got? Nothing. Sorry. Carol sold her upgraded caravan just four weeks before Aria Resorts took over the site. Do you think the new owners should have some sort of moral obligation that these owners leave with something? You'd expect them to want caravan owners to leave with dignity, uh, and in some circumstances that might mean um, giving them um, some, uh, a better payment for their caravan in order that they can walk away and they, haven't been so, they don't feel so badly treated as a result of the takeover. The Rookley situation has caught the attention of Isle of Wight MP Bob Seeley. He helped negotiate Aria's transitional support offer. We've got cases in Rookley where people have invested a lot of money and they've lost it month, effectively lost it months later. We want to stop that from happening again. Now, it seems to me that what we need is to close that loophole in the law. So when you buy into a caravan site, and if you have a plot, you should have a leasehold for an amount of time. It might be six months, it might be six years, it might be a decade. But for how long you have got rights over that plot for that time. So absolutely, this is something that we need to look at, and I'll be doing that with my colleagues.
So, time to hear about what's happening at Rookley from Aria Resorts themselves. According to Companies House, two of the major shareholders behind Aria Resorts are Ben Puddle and Edward Teddy Andrews. We asked repeatedly for an interview with someone from Aria Resorts. Mr. Andrews said yes, and then said no. We did get a statement on behalf of Mr. Andrews, who would have been sat there. It says that Aria Resorts fully sympathise and understand that this transitional phase has brought about some uncertainty and concern. Aria Resorts won't discuss individual cases, but say they are liaising with owners on a one-to-one -one basis. Now, legally, Aria Resorts has done nothing wrong, but is it really being fair to the caravan owners of Rookley Park? Oh, <laughs> look at that. Forgot to plug it in. Love to hear your thoughts about that story. You can join in the conversation on Twitter and more about the programme at Inside Out South. Still to come, the most famous.